My name is Amaka Ubaka. I'm one of the morning anchors on 7 News today in New England, and I'm so excited to be here. Welcome to the annual Boston Public Schools Valedictorians Luncheon. So I want to begin by thanking our amazing sponsors for making today possible. You can find a complete list of our sponsors in your program book. A special thanks to our major sponsors, though. Eastern Bank Foundation. Anyone from Eastern Bank? OK, here we go. And of course, our host, the Boston Red Sox. Come on. Everyone, just, just take a minute and look that way. Look out at Fenway Park. Isn't that an amazing view? We are so privileged to be here on this Tuesday afternoon to celebrate all the students in here accomplishing such incredible things. So thank you for the venue. This is just amazing. And because of their generosity, each student is receiving an Amazon gift card to support their transition to college. We love that, right? So students, please check your BPS email tomorrow for that special gift. So today we celebrate an inspiring group of young people who have worked incredibly hard to really reach the top of their class. It's an amazing accomplishment and we salute you. Thank you for everyone doing that. I'm sure the students would agree that they did not achieve their success alone. Along the way, they've been supported by caring adults, many of whom are here with us today. So give your guys a round of applause as well. Yeah. First, I'd like to ask all the parents and family members of our valedictorians to please stand. Please stand, parents. They didn't get here alone. Yes, give them a round of applause. Thank you to all of you and your hard work. Yes, yes. We're also joined today by many school leaders, teachers, and guidance counselors. Will you please stand now and also be recognized for your guidance? throughout the school year. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of your hard work on behalf of these students and all of the young people in Boston public schools. So before I introduce our speakers, I want to invite our host for today, President and CEO of Boston Red Sox, CEO of Fenway Sports, Sam Kennedy, to say a couple of words for us. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Fenway Park. Um, it is such an honor and a privilege for me to be standing before you. Uh, before coming up here, I went back and, and called um, uh, some people at my alma mater, Brookline High School, where I was class of 1991, and I just wanted to confirm and relay to you that I was not the valedictorian. <laughs> I thought maybe I had forgotten something, or no, no, not even close. Uh, and now as a parent of two high school graduates, I checked their records. They were also not the valedictorians. So we are, all of us at, at the Boston Red Sox, Dave Friedman, Claire Durant, our entire front office, our ownership group, led by John and Linda Henry and our chairman, Tom Werner, we are so in awe uh, of each and every one of you Congratulations on the amazing accomplishment, not just of, of graduating, uh, but how you did it uh, as the valedictorian. And you are all truly the future leaders uh, that we need here in our city, in our region, and frankly, in our world. So I am from a family of teachers, so I'm glad. Thank you for giving the shout out to all the teachers. You guys are the backbone of uh, our Boston public school system. We're so grateful for everything you do each and every day. The parents, I can only imagine the pride that you are feeling as we sit here today, uh, parents of uh, valedictorian. And it's gonna be incredible to watch uh, the next chapter ahead for our amazing students and, and future leaders. Uh, so I have just one task other than to thank everyone who made today possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of our elected officials, especially our fearless leader, Mayor Michelle Wu, who's here. Yes, thank you, Mayor Wu. Thank you for your commitment to Boston Public Schools. It's been a huge priority ever since you came to office. But I have just one uh, responsibility, and that is I was tasked with giving you all a graduation gift. 
on behalf of the Boston Red Sox. So if you would, please, I think you have an envelope uh, that has been given to you with your name on it from the Red Sox. Please feel free to open it up, but I will ruin the surprise here. Yeah, drum roll, please. Uh, e each and every one of you is receiving four tickets to come to a Red Sox game with your friends and family. Um, we, we, we are so proud of you, and we are so grateful for everything that you've done. And please know, hopefully you'll stay here in the city of Boston and never leave just the way I did. But if you do go off to bigger and better things, please know the Red Sox are your baseball team. Fenway Park is your ballpark. This ballpark is for all of us. And we're so grateful. And we say congratulations. Thank you very much. Enjoy your lunch, your well-deserved luncheon. Congrats again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Appreciate it. All right, at this time, I'd like to invite to the podium a person who has made public education a top priority in her administration. She's truly devoted to bringing transformative change to the city of Boston. Please welcome Mayor Michelle Wu. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, maybe. Um, thank you so much for being here, for making this such a special event, as always. This is one of my favorite, favorite events all year long, to feel the sense of pride and accomplishment and just community that is built up across each and every one of our Boston Public High Schools is really special. Um, I'm so grateful to our hosts for making sure that we always all have a home at Fenway and for all that you do in many, many ways to support the young people of the city and from youth sports to creating more access to the partnerships that we have on many different fronts. So thank you to Sam and to Dave and to the entire, Claire, to the entire Red Sox team for, for having us. I will say I just recently got back from a trip um, to the Vatican where the Pope had invited mayors and governors from around the country to come together and talk about climate change and for Boston to present on what we were doing. And the gift that I gave the Pope uh, was a Boston Red Sox hat because that is the demonstration of our identity as a city and he blessed it, so we're good. <laughs> um, I am so thankful also to be surrounded every day in the city by leaders who care so much about the next generation, the leaders of today in our students and our families. Uh, there is no better team in any school district around the country, I will say, than our superintendent, Mary Skipper, our chair of the Boston School Committee, Jerry Robinson, <laughs> vice chair, Michael O'Neill, um, and uh, all of those, I have folks from my team, Kristen McSwain, Tali Robbins, and so many others, uh, Rebecca Granger might be somewhere in the room as well, who are focused every single day about not just how young people can be served by checking the box around, are we talking about schools every once in a while, but are schools actually the connection point to everything else that city government and our city has to offer? Museums and cultural institutions and jobs and summer programming and healthcare and all of that. So from the, uh, the examples that you all are setting at each and every one of your organizations, we are really showing the rest of the country and the world how it's done. Um, I want to give a shout out also to our city councilors who I see are here. I see two of them. I don't, there might be more of them uh, sprinkled throughout or coming later, but thank you so much to City Councilor Aaron Murphy and City Councilor Henry Santana for all that you do to show up for our young people and for our school system. Um, I, so I grew up as a daughter of immigrants. My parents, uh, maybe like some who are in this room, uh, my parents left behind everything they knew in Taiwan and came to start over and build a new life in the United States just for the chance at education for their kids. And that was drilled into me <laughs> constantly growing up, right, with growing up with those expectations. And in some ways, we felt it. Every time my dad's uh, job, he got a job that paid a little bit higher, he would move, we would move as a family to that 
next smallest house in the best public school district that the family could afford. And so we moved around a couple times growing up to be able to access education. And um, I don't, okay, I even feel embarrassed sort of saying this here. I've never said this publicly before, but I, I was a valedictorian at my high school growing up. <laughs> and I, sorry, no, no shame. No shade. Um, and I say that not to try to brag. Again, it feels like uncomfortable for me to uh, even talk about it. But as a, I'm putting it out there to this room that I have a little bit of the understanding of how you got to where you are for our students. And I know it wasn't easy. It certainly wasn't just on you. And I know how much your families have poured into you for that. But that it's at the same time of experiencing so much pride and joy and celebration, sometimes that can feel a little bit like a, a heavy set of expectations and responsibilities too. And some of you might, like me, also be used to now and, and probably going to have a lot more experiences in your life of being the first in your family to have a certain set of experiences, to be in certain types of rooms like this, to be in uh, spaces where you are going to be the decision maker, where you're going to take leadership and it might feel like you are charting new ground on behalf of your whole family and sometimes on behalf of your whole community. It's not always easy and it can feel quite daunting at times. So that's why I'm so grateful that in Boston we have this valedictorian project bringing all of us together to make sure that you know we have your backs that you have each other, and this city is always going to be there for you in every success that you face in the future, in every challenge that you might encounter, we are gonna be here for you. Um, I've been mayor now for three years, and I've had the chance to do a lot of really intense, amazing things, some very hard things, but one of the hardest things that I had to do came pretty early on uh, when I stepped into this office. We did a major renovation of City Hall Plaza, which meant that um, at one point in the plaza, there's a, sp a space where all of the city's neighborhoods are carved into stone around this special circle. And in the middle of that, there's actually a time capsule. So whenever we do a big renovation of public buildings, we'll sort of put something in there with lots of mementos of this current day and age in the hopes that 100 years from now, someone else will open it and find it and look back on, on the stories that we had to share and different, th I think we put in like an iPhone in a bag and different kinds of um, materials or tickets or, or, or just things to show what 2020, at that point, 2022 was like. One of the things that traditionally has always gone into time capsules in Boston is the mayor writes a letter to the next mayor that's gonna open that up. And so here I was, less than a year into office, and I had to write a letter to a mayor 100 or 150 years into the future. You know, what was I gonna say? It felt like a big responsibility. So I did some research, and we pulled up every other letter that we found from time capsules that we, we opened up in the last you know, foreseeable past. There were three of them. I think it was like 1831, 1890, and then 19... 1981, I believe, is when they were um, filled. And when I read those letters from those three mayors to their future counterpart, there were two commonalities. One was just the scale of imagination that they had. They wrote about all sorts of technology that they might see one day in the future, flying cars or genetic changes and all, all of these things. Some of them were actually quite on point. Some of them were, have yet to happen. But the second thing was that despite how boldly they could imagine the future, they had a very specific idea of who would be opening that letter 100 years into the future. The first letter said, dear sir. The second letter said, uh, Mr. Mayor. And then the third letter said something like, Dear Mr. Mayor, right? It was very clear that even as recently as the 1980s, when they wrote a letter to the future mayor, they never imagined that someone like me or who looked like many of the valedictorians in this room would one day be there receiving that letter. And so I just...
I share this to give you a little bit, hopefully a little bit of um, camaraderie in that I still every day have experiences where I feel like I am remembering what it feels like to be the first in a space and to be sort of walking in some ways um, into new territory on behalf of my family and my community. But the second is that we have the ability, each one of us, to dramatically reshape what is possible simply by being yourself, simply by being who you are in the spaces that you are walking into and that you are invited into. So please know that whenever you are in those spaces, no matter how exciting, no matter how daunting, we are here at the city of Boston right there with you. Now, um, I'm just gonna add a little caveat to that. We also expect that you will come back and work for the city and stay in the city forever, but <laughs> we hope, you know, go out, enjoy your um, time in college or whatever is next for you, live the fullest that you can, but know that there's always a home for you back in Boston. We would benefit so much from you choosing to build your career here in the city and to be part of opening doors for the next generation of people who are gonna come up right after you, looking up to you as, your, as their example. So thank you to everyone in this room. One more round of applause for Mayor Wu. I think the fact that she's talking about the importance of authenticity and being yourself, it really strikes a chord, especially with me personally, so thank you for that. All right, next to the stage, it's my pleasure to introduce the chair of Boston School Committee, longtime education leader and BPS graduate herself, Jerry Robinson. Thank you, and so in true honesty, since everybody has been telling their status, I did graduate from Boston Public Schools in 1967, and I was not the valedictorian. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Amaka, and thank you to, for, for, to you for being our host today. It's truly a pleasure to be here with the superintendent and all of you on this beautiful day in this beautiful house. Look at all these beautiful faces to welcome you to the Boston Public Schools Valedictorian Luncheon. I'd like to take a moment to introduce my fellow school committee members who are with us today. Our Vice Chair, Mr. Michael O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> Member Chantal Lima Barbosa. <laughs> Member Kwok Chan. And I'm not sure if he's here. Um, Member. Brandon Cardet Hernandez. <clears throat> Ms. Polanco Garcia and Dr. Stephen Alkins could not be with us today, but sent along their congratulations and best wishes. On behalf of the entire committee, I want to applaud not only the students, but the families, school leaders, and staff who supported you every step of the way. Let's give them all another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I also want to recognize our elected officials, Mayor Michelle Wu, Councilors Tanya Fernandez, Fernandez Anderson, John Fitzgerald, Julia Mejia, Erin Murphy, and Henry Santana. Thank you again to our generous sponsors, many of whom answer the call year after year. I particularly want to thank our presenting sponsor, Eastern Bank, and our host, the Boston Red Sox. Quite simply, we could not do this without you. Our mayor, our school committee, our superintendent, all of us are committed to providing the best public education in the country. Every day, our goal is to enhance quality while expanding equity and accessibility. However, it's ultimately the students who must seize the opportunities presented and challenge us, the adults, to do better. And you certainly have risen to that challenge. Preparing for today's event, I was struck by two things. First, the incredible diversity represented here today. From South America to Brighton, our valedictorians literally come from all over the world. Some were born and raised in Boston and have attended BPS since kindergarten. Others have only been in this country a few short years. Your journeys are a testament to the rich tapestry of our community and the strength that lies in our diversity. I was also struck by your resilience and strong work ethic. One thing you all have in common is that you started high school 
during the height of the pandemic. Despite this huge disruption, you all persevered. You took on AP and dual enrollment courses, learned new languages, explored new fields through internships, volunteers in, volunteered in your communities, all while excelling in the arts and sport. Your love for learning and constant self-challenge is truly admirable. I noticed each of you has your own support system, whether it's family, a teacher, or a counselor. Having someone to guide you is crucial. None of us can do this alone. Life is unpredictable, but with support, we find the strength to overcome the challenges and grow. We want to make sure that you that support system moving forward. That's why we're delighted to be joined today by the Valedictorian Project, led by former Senator Warren Tolman and his amazing team. Hopefully, you had a chance to meet them today when you checked in. If not, we'll follow up later. The Valedictorian Project does amazing work connecting VPS valedictorians with peers and senior mentors to support college completion. Please take advantage of this extra support. If I've had learned anything in all my years, it's that none of us can live life alone, and we all have moments when we need to lean on others and moments where others lean on us. In that spirit, I encourage you to be that mentor for someone else, a younger sibling or a classmate who may be struggling. You have the power to make a difference in someone's life right now. In this room, we're surrounded by an abundance of talent and promise. I encourage you to reach for your dreams and when you give back to the city that you've, that's given you so much, whether it's by volunteering, giving to good causes, or getting involved in community projects, let's use what we're good at, what we have, what we care about, to lift up the people around us. Our city's vibrancy and success stems from the diversity, commitment, and collaborative spirit of its people. Congratulations again to all of you. We're so proud of you and enjoy this spectacular day. Thank you, Chair Robinson. Those were very special words, and I think you said it. Continue to dream big, and also pay it forward to those that also helped you get to where you are today. So thank you for those words. All right, our next speaker has made remarkable strides in advancing our district's goals, focused on ensuring all students have equitable access to quality education and experiences. Please join me in welcoming Superintendent Mary Skipper. So good afternoon. Um, first off, just a big thank you to the Red Sox, to Eastern Bank Foundation. This is honestly one of my favorite uh, coming from the high school world events because it's really about our young people and their families. And, uh, and to have so much genius and talent in one room, um, it's just, it's full of life. And so uh, thank you for helping to make that happen. Um, I will do my confession. I was the valedictorian in my class. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I want to just focus on our students for a second. Um, having been at the high school level as a school leader for 10 years, I want to just shout out the school leaders for a minute because I know all you put in to helping your students get the best and all, every opportunity that's possible. Um, and so what we have today in this room with our students is the best of BPS on so many different levels. When I think of the valedictorian, and I saw valedictorians come up through my high school at the time, Tech Boston, um, it's about exceptionalism, right? Like you are exceptional as students. You challenge every step, the academics, if it's early college, you take courses. If it's advanced placement, you take courses. If it's international baccalaureate, you take courses. If it's dual enrollment, you take courses. And in those courses, you excel, you teach other students, you really put forward your genius and your mind and you work it. That's part of what we're celebrating today. But the other part that I've seen with the valedictorians that have come forward is that this is about all the other things you bring to the table. 
You are athletes. You are, you have jobs where you are shining in your internships or you've found that one thing in career that really excites you and gives you life. Some of you are caretakers and you are dealing with more than most of the adults in this room. Some of you are you know, working a job that contributes to your household and that's how your family gets through. You have to do that. And that's your thought as you think about college. Some of you are, you know, about half of you, you are first generation. You're the first in your family to go to college, right? That's, that's impre like that is huge. Half of you, or almost half of you, came up through the BPS from kindergarten all the way through high school. You are BPS bred. 10 of you came from another country where you had to not only excel in high school, but you had to learn the language and figure out what we call this education system. But you did it, and you didn't just do it, you did it exceptionally. That's what makes you the valedictorian. That's what enables you to get onto that stage at graduation and you've earned the respect and right to address your class. So today, we celebrate you. And we celebrate your family, because I think anyone that's been a valedictorian, apparently there's a lot of us in the room, but you, didn't, you know you didn't do it by yourself. You know the people sitting next to you, your friends back at school, your siblings who may or may not be here, they lifted you up and helped you at every step excel. So going forward, as you go on to your next step in higher education, first of all, remember, you belong. You earned that. And you're going to get all kinds of new opportunities. Embrace them the same way you embraced this. Give it your all and lean on people so that if you stumble, somebody's there to pick you up. If you fall, somebody's there to pick you up. And remember, your high schools, your high school leaders, your guidance, your student support are there to always pick you up. They are your BPS family and they have your back. So today, we salute you. You 32 amazing young people who are going to set this world on fire and really bring, for those of us that are on the opposite end of age, give us new hope and lead this generation. Congratulations. Thank you, Superintendent Skipper, for those amazing words. Since everyone's saying whether they were valedictorians or not, I was not valedictorian, so I think we're two, too. So there you go. So I'm honored to, even more honored to be up on this stage today. All right, it's my pleasure to introduce our student speaker, the valedictorian of Madison Park Technical Vocational High School, Arlene Yanes. Good afternoon, class of 2024, valedictorians, parents, educators, Superintendent Skipper, Mayor Wu. It's an absolute pleasure to be here to celebrate the outstanding accomplishments and achievements of my fellow Boston Public School seniors. Let's take a moment to acknowledge the unwavering dedication, sacrifices, and hard work that have brought us here today. Yeah. <laughs> May this momentous occasion inspire us to strive for greatness in every aspect of our lives as we embark on our journey filled with endless possibilities and new opportunities for growth. I want to start by giving a special thank you to all the parents and caregivers for the many sacrifices you have all made and for your guidance throughout these years. My name is Arlene Yanis, and today I stand here with you as a young Salvadorian American woman ready to take on life's challenges. I'm grateful to have parents and siblings who support me. They have always pushed me to do my best. Since I can remember, 
My parents would repeat this phrase to me. Echale ganas, mija, si se puede. <laughs> yeah. Meaning, give it your all, my daughter, it's possible. These six words resonated with me throughout the years. As I grew older, I realized these words repeated by my parents came from a place of strength and sacrifice. My parents were born in El Salvador and came to the United States, like most immigrants, to achieve the American dream. They worked hard and raised both me and my siblings. They made certain to emphasize the importance of pursuing all opportunities presented to us and to give it our all. My high school years at Madison Park Technical Vocational High School were not considered the average high school experience. Freshman year, I was online due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The fall of my sophomore year got even more interesting. I met my classmates, the actual people behind the screen. They were real. I made new friends, and my high school finally started to become, started to feel more normal. But I wanted more. That spring, I challenged myself and enrolled in early college courses. I was one of the first five MPTVHS sophomore students to enroll in the college courses on the Bunker Hill campus. The Rocks Map Early College program is a partnership between Madison Park Technical Vocational High School and Bunker Hill Community College. Bunker, Bunker Hill Community College provides MPTVHS students with the opportunity to earn transferable college credits while still in high school. Although, at first I thought, Arlene, what are you thinking? I wasn't that confident I would be able to handle the pressure of keeping up with my high school work as well as college level work. But then I took a moment and I stood back. I heard those words that my parents would always say. Echale ganas, mija, si se puede. On May 23rd, I walked across the Bunker Hill Community College stage with my associate degree in liberal arts. I'm not gonna stand here and say it was not easy, not at all. However, in order to achieve greatness, we must push ourselves out of our comfort zones. We must take risks, experience new environments, and challenge ourselves to be better. Many sacrifices were made before us to have freedom and choices. We must stop telling ourselves, we can't do it, it's not possible, or the journey is too long, I'm not sure I'll be able to reach it. The truth is, you can do it, it is possible. Madison Park Technical Vocational High School is a great school. Don't believe the outside noise is. It's just simply not true. While enrolled in a dental assisting program, I have the opportunity to participate in the Harvard Med Science and Med Science Lab, basic life support and CPR, as well as completing OSHA for safe work practices. Currently, I'm in my co-op internship at East Boston Dental and Orthodontics as an assistant, and I've been learning so much and putting my skills to great use. I don't think I would be standing here full of confidence had I not attended Madison Park. I mean, where else can you earn a high school diploma, go off and free associate degree? Only IMP. <laughs> I have to thank my sister for always being my rock, the one who made me believe it was possible and that I shouldn't let anything hold me back. I would also like to thank Mr. Grace, Mr. Gomes, and all of the teachers for their constant encouragement and support. They all believed in me. Their support gave me wings to fly, and once I gained confidence, I couldn't stop flying. <laughs> I refuse to be a statistic. I'm an independent woman who will contribute to society, have a successful future, all thanks to Madison Park. I'm an MP cardinal and I will fly high. <laughs> I'm grateful to have been born here in Boston because I have an opportunity that my parents did not have growing up. Like many of you, our parents made enormous sacrifices to be in the United States. They aspire for us to be successful, compassionate citizens who are capable of contributing to a better and safer world. My advice to all of you is to continue to learn and challenge yourselves to achieve your goals. No one can stop us but ourselves. Let us not be easily intimidated because we look different 
or because we were not born here. We're Americans. I wish each of you the best. Congratulations to our, Amer to our amazing class of 2024 and valedictorians here today. We are determined, resilient, and confident, and ready to make a difference. And as my parents always say, echale ganas. Thank you. Arlene, thank you so much. You're not just going to fly, you are going to soar. Wow. I mean, it's not easy to get it in front of the room and talk in front of everyone, so. Well done, congratulations. And wait, 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 I wanna know who's sister? You sister, you were videotaping? Thank you for your support, you deserve a round of applause too. All right, now it's time to get down to business, who's ready? Yeah? All right, so in a moment, I'll be calling up the students one by one. The students are gonna be called up in alphabetical order by school from ACC to Tech Boston. So when I call your name, please step forward to collect your citation and have your picture taken with the mayor, the chair, and the superintendent. If a student is not here, I just ask that the head of school come up to the stage to accept the citation on behalf of the student, okay? Got a lot of names to get through, so I gotta have my water. All right. All right, and after your photo is taken, just go ahead and return to your table. At the end of the program, I'm gonna call all the valedictorians to join us outside on the balcony for a group photo overlooking the ball field. That's exciting. So please stick around because you don't wanna miss that group photo. All right, let's get started, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the valedictorians of the class of 2024. Here we go. Let you guys get on stage. All right, we're gonna start with, from another course to college, Eddie Rodriguez Diaz, please come up. Eddie navigated the transition from virtual to in-person learning during the pandemic. He enjoys spending time with friends and family, listening to music and reading. Eddie aspires to tackle housing affordability and sustainability. This fall, he'll attend Boston University through the QuestBridge program, pursuing a STEM major with a focus on architecture and engineering. Way to go, Eddie. Give him a round of applause, yes. All right, next up, from Boston Adult Technical Academy, we've got Juliana Alzate Lopera. Please come to the stage, you're here. There we go, lovely in red. Originally from Colombia, Juliana moved to the United States in 2022 to seek a better life and more opportunities to assist her family. She will be the first in her immediate family to attend college, how amazing is that? Wow. After graduation, Juliana plans to continue her education at Bunker Hill Community College and work as a flight attendant, and we can't wait to see you soar. Hi, Juliana, congratulations. Wow. Perfect. Next, from Boston Collaborative High School, Isaiah Peters. Is Isaiah here? There he is in the back. Isaiah's transfer from homeschooling during the pandemic to BCHS in 2022 has been marked by positivity and admiration from peers and teachers alike. Supported by family, he is pursuing dual enrollment at Benjamin Franklin Institute and applying to the practical electricity program for the fall of 2024-25. Isaiah's determination, there we go, yeah. Isaiah's determination to further his education or enter a trade reflects his commitment to personal growth and success. You're gonna do great wherever you go, Isaiah. Congratulations and amazing work. Let's give him one more round of applause. Yes. All right, there was one before you, but we'll get to it now. All right, from Boston Arts Academy, we've got Sakura Rosenthal. Are you here? There you are. Sakura's journey through Boston public school since kindergarten has been more than just education. It's been a pathway to her dreams. Sakura is blazing a trail of representation and inspiration. She hopes to be an artist one day who can make another girl 
have an experience like they've never had before so that they can feel seen and heard. Her journey continues at Boston University on the Presidential Scholarship in Acting with aspirations for a minor in Japanese language and literature. Take a bow, Shakira. You are leading the way. Congratulations. Wow. All right, from Boston Community Leadership Academy, we've got Ariel Peña Baez. Ariel's journey at BPS began in kindergarten, and since then, he has continually excelled academically, achieving a remarkable 4.54 GPA in his junior year. Beyond academics, his impressive versatility and unwavering dedication showcased in the school's production highlighted his ability to conquer any challenge. Coming from a family deeply committed to education, Ariel is primed to accomplish remarkable feats at Northeastern University with a full scholarship. Congratulations. With his potential, sky is truly the limit. Congratulations. All right, from Boston Day and Evening Academy, we've got Tyra Perry. Come on down to the stage. With her unwavering dedication to study social work and her mission to support those in the Massachusetts Department of Children and Families, Tyra's dedication is truly inspiring as she, the first in her family to attend college, heads to Roxbury Community College to pursue her dream of making a difference both as a social worker and through her budding makeup business. Let's cheer her on every step of the way. Tyra, congratulations. I love that. I might need some tips on the makeup there. We'll talk later, okay? Congratulations, that's incredible. All right, up next we've got from Boston Greed Academy, Josue Garcia. Born and raised in Boston from an El Salvadorian family, Josue has been part of the Boston Public Schools since kindergarten, starting at Winship 5, K through 5. Oh, you're the representative. There we go. Okay, I figured. All right, come on over. You deserve it too. I said, wait a second. He's a little... <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> wait, I want to know. What, can you tell me your name? Uh, Matt. 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 Okay. Principal. All right, the principal. We got the principal. All right. I'm still going to read a little bit about Josue. You couldn't be here today. All right, so starting at Winship K through five and continuing his journey at BGA from sixth grade onward, he built strong bonds with peers and mentors at BGA, always encouraged to push his boundaries and see things from different angles. As the first in his family to attend college with a full scholarship to Northeastern University, he's eager to embark on the next chapter of his journey. So, Josue Garcia, congratulations, and thank you for being here on his behalf. All right, up next, Boston International High School, we've got ben, ben, Benvinda Silva Suarez. Benvinda, there we are. Originally from Cape Verde, Benvinda has truly embraced the many opportunities that high school has to offer. She's been involved in the National Honor Society, Boston Debate League, in school service group, and has also served as a teacher's assistant. She will be the first in her family to go to college. We have so many of these, this is great. And will be attending Bryn Mawr College with the Posse Scholarship. Her goal is to become a registered nurse. Let's hear it one more time for Benvinda. Congratulations. From Boston Latin Academy, we've got Beatrix King. Let's give her a round of applause. Beatrix is a Boston native who has been attending BLA for the past six years. She excels in STEM and language classes. And outside of academics, Beatrix is an avid member of the BPS rowing team and enjoys reading, running, watching movies, and spending time with friends. Next fall, she will be attending Yale University with aspirations to major in mechanical engineering or computer science. Congratulations, Beatrix. Absolutely incredible. All right, from Boston Latin School, we've got Jessica Lee. 
Jessica shines both academically and in extracurricular activities, demonstrating leadership in the school newspaper, science magazine, and BLS lab program. Hop on up here, there you go. Alongside her roles in the soccer team, orchestra, and Girl Scouts, this is so, you guys do so many extracurricular activities. I'm, she contributes to her community by volunteering at a hospital and a senior center. Next stop, Harvard College for chemistry. Well done, Jessica, congratulations. All right, from Brighton High School, we have Jen Ping Yi. Born in Colombia to a Chinese family, Jen Ping moved with her family to the US in 2022. Despite challenges transitioning to an American high school, she faced them with unwavering resilience. Passionate about art and community, she serves as a part-time art teacher's assistant. As the first in her family to attend college, Jen Ping is looking forward to attending Northeastern University with a full scholarship majoring in architecture. Wow. That's incredible. All right, from Jeremiah E. Burke High School, we've got Eric Mendez. Eric Mendez. Any kind? No, no, all right, not here. Does anyone want to accept his citation on his behalf? No? Okay, please. Thank you. We got a we gotta shout out Eric Mendez. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Eric was born and raised in Boston, has been part of Boston Public School since kindergarten. He enjoys basketball. First of all, let, uh, I want to hear. Okay, tell me who you are. Oh, Dr. Linda McIntyre. Okay. And, and I used to be the principal of the Burke. There we go. All right. All right. There we I go. love the Burke. There we go. I we bleed love it. blue blood. Okay. We love that. <laughs> Thank you for accepting on Eric's behalf. I just wanted to let her say she was. All right. So Eric, born and raised in Boston, has been part of Boston Public School since kindergarten, enjoys basketball, watching movies, and learning new things. Now is a first-generation college student and the youngest in his family. Eric is shifting his focus to pursuing a bachelor's degree next fall. Eric will be attending Northeastern University. University where he plans to explore the field of computer science. So great job, Eric, and thank you for accepting on his behalf. Next, from Charlestown High School, Tina Vo. All right, originally from Vietnam. Tina moved to the U.S. in 2022, juggling dual enrollment classes, a job at Artists for Humanity's 3D Design Studio, and volunteering at the Ashmont Farm Market and Boston Little Saigon. Tina defies language barriers by, ac by acing five AP courses in two years. Wow, congratulations, wait, 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 wait. Let me finish reading about you. She's now headed to Northeastern University, the first in her family to attend college. Congratulations, Tina. Tina. Yes, soak it up. Soak up every moment. All right, from Community Academy, we've got David Castillo Rojas. Yes, David excels in academics as well as sports. Recognized by the Boston Globe in 2023 for his exceptional performance on the baseball field, he is breaking new ground as the first in his family to attend college. While staying dedicated to baseball, David also gives back by mentoring peers and engaging in community service. With his steadfast resolve and community spirit, David's future is brimming with potential at Northern Essex Community College. David, congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, from the Community Academy of Science and Health, also known as CASH, Nia Rendal. <laughs> Nia's journey from Cape Verde to Boston in 2022 marked a transformative chapter, leaving her family behind. Despite challenges, her commitment to academic excellence endured. At CASH, she found support and forged connections, paving her path to college and a potential healthcare career. Nia will continue her education at Howard University. Let's go in Washington, D.C. We know her family is extremely proud. Congratulations, congratulations. Oh. All right, up next from Dearborn STEM Academy, we've got Christella St. Cyr. Originally from Haiti, Christella will be the first in her family again to attend college. Let's just say how remarkable that is to so many firsts in this room, right? To first to attend college in the family. 
She successfully completed 10 college courses through dual enrollment beginning in grade 10. She plans to pursue a career studying nursing, ready to help others, and of course make a difference in the community. She'll be attending Northeastern University, where she also has earned a full scholarship. Congratulations. Wow. All right, from East Boston High School, Omar Plates. Yes, come on up to the stage. Born in a small town in El Salvador, Omar is set to be the first in his family to graduate high school and college. Did you guys hear me? High school and college. With a stellar track record in honors, AP and dual enrollment classes, he is prepared for success. Omar credits East Boston High School for providing him with essential tools and opportunities. Hold on, Omar is heading to Northeastern University to major in electrical engineering with a full scholarship. Don't hide. I'm reading slow on purpose so you guys can kind of soak in every moment. Enjoy it. Let your, let your family take some pictures of you on stage. All right, from the English high school, we've got Liliana Pamela Hardy. Yes. Lily excels academically with AP classes and a passion for literature, art, and STEM. She co-founded the school's book club, volunteers in the library, and will intern in a lab at Harvard this summer. Wow. Lily stands out with her eclectic style, sporting thrifted outfits. All right, we need to talk. Love that. And evoke various moods and eras. She'll be the first in her family to attend college, pursuing biology at Suffolk University with a full ride. Great job, Lily. Great job. Congratulations. Well deserved. All right, from Excel High School, Carol Mendoza Baez. Born in Colombia, Carol arrived in Boston in 2021 with no knowledge of English. Today, she shines as an outstanding student, recognized for exceptional intellect, maturity, and linguistic abilities. She is vice president of the National Honor Society and is an active member of the City of Boston Mayor's Youth Council. Carol is headed to Northeastern University on a full ride. Way to go, Carol. Congratulations. You earned it. Great job. All right, from Fenway High School, we've got Precious Owenagro. Precious, come to the stage. Precious from a Nigerian family of five. Snaps for that. I'm also Nigerian. Has been with Boston Public Schools since kindergarten. As one of the oldest, she balances family responsibilities and academics at Fenway High School. She enjoys crocheting and playing squash, where she has found a community inspired by her childhood admiration for doctors and characters like Doc Mustafins. Precious aspires to become a pediatrician. Driven by the opportunity to care for and support young lives, she is heading to Simmons University. Go, Precious, go. Congratulations. OK. Whew, we're almost there. Getting through, getting through. All right, from the Henderson K-12 Inclusion School, we've got Declan McCormick. Declan. All right, so Declan joined Henderson in ninth grade, quickly becoming a standout student. He credits his long work, his strong work ethic to the positive influences of his Hyde Park neighborhood and actively participates in Most Precious Blood Parish. A respected leader, Declan excels on the debate team. As for college, well, that is still in the works, but here's the plan. Major in business and pursue a career in construction management driven by his desire to better serve the community. Declan, congratulations. That's a great plan. From the Edward M. Kennedy Academy for Health Careers, Anna Rivera. Anna, also known as Anita, was born in Argentina to Peruvian parents. In her free time, she enjoys playing soccer, going for walks in nature, exploring beaches, and cooking. Anna has participated in missionary trips from a young age, helping healthcare professionals with basic duties. She plans to study biology at Northeastern University Valedictorian Scholarship on the pre-med track, aspiring to become a cardiothoracic surgeon and improve lives, so congratulations. Wow, Anna, congratulations. 
some of these plans are so specific. I, I wish I knew what I wanted to do at 18 years old. Wow, or 19 years old, incredible. All right, congratulations. All right, from the Mary Lyon Pilot High School, we've got Seamus Edward Minor. Okay, here we go. Accepting on his behalf here. All right, so Seamus, a lifelong Boston Public School student, shines with his impressive uh, achievements, engaged in art and debate clubs. He's earned recognition like high honors and pride awards alongside his nomination for the National Honor Society. His goal is to thrive as a communications manager, enhancing employer efficiency and empowering individuals to reach their fullest potential. Excitingly, he is set to embark on his journey at Boston University next fall. Thank you so much on accepting on his behalf here, and congratulations to Seamus Edward Miner. Thank you. Let's see here. All right, one more. Two more, a couple more. All right, from Greater Eggleston Community High School, we've got Jewel Ariana Gomez. Jewel here. Yay. All right, born and raised in Boston, Jewel has a passion for dance and is recognized as a natural leader by both peers and adults. Jewel cherishes her family and friends and is proud to be the first in her family to go to college. This fall, she intends to study child growth and development at Bunker Hill Community College. <laughs> Guided by the mantra, she believed she could, so she did. Jewel, congratulations. All right, from Madison Park Technical Vocational High School, we've got Arlene Yanes, our speaker from earlier. Come on over to the stage. Arlene, born in El Salvador, is a top student in the school's dental assisting program with honors and certifications in rheology and CPR. Currently a full-time co-op student at East Boston Dental and Orthodontics. She completed the Rocks Map Early College program, earning an associate's degree from Bunker Hill Community College. She plans to pursue dental hygiene at the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences with a presidential scholarship while working as a dental assistant. Arlene, congratulations. Congratulations and beautiful speech. Beautiful. From the Mel King South End Academy, we've got Demetrius Israel Pepin Cepeda. Demetrius, a dedicated student and a vice president of the student council, excels academically and enjoys reading, dancing, and theater arts. He recently placed second in the August Wilson New Voices monologue competition, advancing to the nationals. That is huge, congrats on that. He plans to attend Roxbury Community College in the fall, considering studies in broadcasting and communications, we should talk, or business administration. Well done, Demetrius. From Margarita Mooney's Academy, we've got Adrian Bram McGovern. Adrian, born and raised in Boston, has nurtured a passion for math since childhood. His engineering internship at Roxbury Community College solidified his decision to pursue engineering after high school. As the first in his family to attend college, he is paving the way to UMass Boston. Congratulations, Adrian. Congratulations. From New Mission High School, we've got Janaira Diaz. Born and raised in Boston, Janaira has been part of the Boston public school system since kindergarten, determined to make her family proud. She is, again, the first in her family to attend college. Janaira will be joining the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Aspiring to pursue a career in the healthcare field with a focus on becoming an ultrasound technician. Congratulations, Shanira. From the John D. O'Brien School of Mathematics and Science, Angelina Lay. Angelina, a Boston public school student since kindergarten and from a Chinese family, is set to be the first in her family to attend college. A member of the National Honor Society, she excels academically, especially in mathematics with nearly all A plus grades and eight AP classes completed. Angelina's interests extend to computer science where she developed her own app. Whoa, whoa, wait, we need, wow. What's the name of the app? 
Oh, okay, okay, that's all right. We'll get more details later. And culinary experimentation. She's bound for Boston University. Congratulations, Angelina. Wow. Incredible. From the Josiah Quincy Upper School, we've got Wan Lin Lei. Wan Lin Lei, come to the stage. Wan Lin moved to Boston at age 10 from China. She is an international baccalaureate diploma candidate with extensive extracurricular involvement and volunteer experiences through the Flair Education Program. She gained valuable internships in science and medicine. Wan Lin, a first-generation college student, will attend Northeastern University School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, again, on a full scholarship. Wow. All right. From Ural Snowden International School at Copley, Jayla Joseph. Jayla Joseph. She has been part of Boston Public Schools since kindergarten and excelled academically in high school. With a passion for learning, she tackled the challenges of international baccalaureate courses while upholding high standards. Inspired by her younger relative, she's motivated to pursue a career in family law. As the first in her family to attend college, she's thrilled to be heading to Northeastern University on a full scholarship where she's gonna be majoring in criminal justice and psychology. Wow, congratulations. congratulations, well deserved. And last but certainly not least, from Tech Boston Academy, Richie Nguyen. All right, you brought the family and the friends. Richie, a dedicated Boston public school student, actively engages in Tech Boston Academy's Student Government Association, Senior Council, and Design and Visual Communication Pathway. Motivated by his parents' immigrant journey from Vietnam, he is committed to academic excellence, enrolling in numerous AP and honors courses, following in his brother's footsteps as a valedictorian. So here we go, runs in the family. With a passion for software engineering, Richie is excited to pursue his aspirations at Northeastern University. Congratulations. Wow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have one more round of applause for the valedictorians for the class of 2024. They all can stand up and give them a round of applause. That's amazing. One more round of applause here. Wow. So many firsts in this room. You should all be incredibly proud of yourselves. All right. Now, I'd like to invite all of our valedictorians to gather outside on the balcony for a large group photo. That concludes our program. Thank you all so much for coming and spending your Tuesday afternoon with us. Have a great day.